Today we're doing liver and onions. First you want to prep the liver. You want to cut the liver into similar sizes so that they all cook the same and remove any tough parts when you're cutting through it. You'll be able to feel the tough parts or the bulges. And once you are done slicing the liver, put it into a bowl and then you can soak it in milk or cream. We used half and half, which is actually 10%. Don't worry about the measurement of the milk. You just want to make sure all the liver is covered and let this sit for about two to three hours before cooking. While you have the liver marinating in the milk to take out the iron taste, I decided to slice mushrooms and onion, roughly all the same size. These are button mushrooms. I mean, don't forget to save the cores and the ends. I do put that in my stock. I'm just heating a pan up here and I'm gonna throw a little butter in it so that it is melted before I throw my onions in. And remember to keep it on low heat because you don't wanna burn the butter. This is me just cutting my onions. And remember, you always wanna cut the onions in half first so that they don't move around on the table. I am just slicing it roughly, but keeping it usually the same size so that we don't have pieces of uncooked onion in our mushroom and onion mixture. And once your pan is hot and your butter is melted a little, just throw your onions in and get them sauteing getting the flavor out of them. Do mix them around time to time so they do cook evenly. And then we're now gonna chop some garlic. Now I did do a rough chop on this garlic. I also did save the tips and the ends and the skins of my garlic for my stock. It adds a little nice little kick and flavor when you actually boil them down as well. Now once you got the onions, you're gonna saute the onions a little bit before you'll add the mushrooms. And then after you add the mushrooms, you're gonna add the whole chunks of garlic shortly after. But this is low heat, so it does take a little bit of time. And you have to stir it periodically so that it doesn't burn or cook in one spot too much. Making a quick breading for the liver, I use all purpose flour, about a cup and a half. Then I use about three quarter cups of tapioca starch just to lighten out the breading a little bit and then i use about two tablespoons of curry powder and then i use about a tablespoon of cumin and then i always use salt and pepper and of course it's pink salt and black whole pepper and once you've added all those ingredients you're just gonna fork them together or mix them around any way you would like and that is a simple breading curry powder all-purpose flour tapioca starch and salt and pepper with a pinch of cumin added now this is me just straining and getting ready for the liver out of the cream and it has been chilling for three hours at this time now we do let it soak in milk because it takes out the iron taste inside the liver. I use a strainer to get all the milk off. You don't have to rinse this. You just have to get majority of the milk out and then start the breading process. For the breading process, like I said, you make your breading and then you don't actually bread the liver in the bowl. Pour it onto a plate so you can control the amount of breading you use so that you can save the amount of breading that you don't use or you can always add more. I do do individually bread it so that I make sure the liver is completely breaded. I put one hand in the liver so it's wet and I keep one hand dry until the process is done. If you switch up or mix it up, you will find out very fast that you will have dough balls on the end of your fingers and it becomes difficult to bread and you're spending more time washing your hands and drying it than actually breading the liver. Breading the liver does take some time. It is an extra step, but the more you do it, the faster you get at it. 
doing it in small batches is way more efficient than actually doing it by pouring all the flour on top of them. Get them all nicely coated, then move them all to the side is my preferred method. As you're breading the liver, obviously your onions and mushrooms are continually to cook down. And don't forget to add a little butter here and there. I did add a lot of butter at this time because I know I'm getting ready to add the liver to the onions. A little bit of liver to actually bread, so I am just adding more flour when needed to do it. This is when all my liver is done and I had a little bit extra flour on the plate. I just mixed it all together to get as much breading on the liver as I could. So I cook the onions and mushrooms until they're almost finished, translucent, a little bit of color on them. And then I put a little bit of butter in the center of the pan and then I start laying my liver into the pan. You do want to use a fair bit of butter because the liver is breaded and you just want to lay it down in a fashion that it's all touching the ground. But I did crowd the pan with the liver but because it is on low heat and I did individually flip all the liver to make sure it cooked on both sides there's lots of butter it's on low temperature so it will cook evenly now once you have all the liver in the pan you're gonna add a little bit of butter so that it does not burn at the same time it does add beautiful flavor and beautiful browning to it at this time the liver has been cooking for maybe about 10 minutes and you flip it and it's all golden brown of course in the middle the liver does cook the fastest so if i do notice that the liver is browning a little in the middle i will then flip the middle to the outside once you have the liver cooked on both sides you can marry all the flavors together and mix the onion and the mushrooms into the liver at this time the liver's only been cooking for probably about 15 minutes on low heat and then i will just throw a lid on it and turn the heat off and let the steam cook the liver the remaining way so that it's nice soft not chewy but like malleable in your mouth and with the remaining flour that you breading that you didn't use just throw it in a container and save it for later this is the finished product of the liver onions and mushrooms and garlic it is a health staple around here you can throw a little dab of sour cream on top and it will melt in your mouth enjoy and don't forget to grab yourself a copy of dr wallach's cooking without the bad foods it is a traditional cookbook that has been rewritten without the 12 bad foods, especially gluten and no oil. It is 300 pages jammed with recipes and a great textbook to follow. And don't forget to check us out on Instagram at Notice Foods. We do post a lot more gluten-free and oil-free recipes. And feel free to message us on there. It is a lot easier for us to contact you. Thank you.